So, hello boys and girls, how are you today? I hope you had a good week and you had to get back into school and I hope you're adjusted and, and ready, working hard and pretty soon you'll have another vacation but work really hard, good to see you. We're gonna finish up our lesson from last week and I hope you remember that we were talking about another highway sign and it was merge. Can you say merge? Merge. And we kind of talked about how we merge together. And learning about merge is something we can do in our life because when we merge, we come together and work together. And it doesn't matter who goes first or second, but being together. So I hope you remember that. So let's look at our um, main focus uh, this week was we must come together and work as a team for God's glory. We need to work together for the same purpose, boys and girls, and not say, well, I don't, I don't want her to be first, and I, I want to be the first one. You know what? I hope you just take that out of your mind, because that isn't what God wants us to do. Nobody is over anyone else. Nobody is better than anyone else. And sometimes we do a better job with somebody else, and that's what we're going to talk about today, and how to merge. Here's a sign down here. Remember, on a highway, you're coming in, and there might be other cars coming, but one of you give way, and maybe it's this car lets you get behind them, or maybe they slow down and you get to go first. But it doesn't matter. We merge together and come together like we clap our hands. We merge together. So, we must come together and work as a team for God's glory. We want to do things for God. That's I want you to stick that in your mind uh, today. That everything we do, I want it to be directed to God or for God to get the glory. And God will be very proud of you. And that's what we want to work for. And our power verse is... How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. And you hear that song a lot. I mean, you hear that uh, word harmony when we sing a song where we blend together and nobody can hear one person's voice. And that's a verse in Psalms 13, uh, no, 133, 1, verse 1 in 133. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. That's one thing that I don't like. I don't like to hear people arguing. I don't like people um, yelling at each other. That kind of uh, makes me want to go, oh, I don't like that. And most people don't. Now, some people hear it a lot, but I didn't. In my house, I could not, uh, I did not ever hear my mom and dad yell. Um, I never heard them argue. And a lot of kids cannot say that. Now, that doesn't mean that I didn't argue with my sisters, because I did. But if I did, and I got caught, I would get in trouble. Yep. And I got a spanking. So that's not something uh, that we could say that we're, we're uh, free from. Because we always do it, but we try to do it and not do it as much. And then pretty soon, as we get older, we should learn not to do it. Because arguing and not being harmony with each other is not what God wants. So, what's up? It says, you and me, we agree we can work in unity. Now, they use a different word because unity means similar to harmony. So... You and me, or you and your friends, we agree. Now, sometimes you say, well, I don't agree with them, and I'm not going to agree with them, and I'm not going to work with them. You know what? You might not agree with them totally, but maybe you have to just kind of give in and give a little bit, and you agree mostly, and there might be something. So, you and me, we agree. We can work in unity. And I want you to remember that, boys and girls, because that's very important, and that's what God wants us to be in unity, all of us, because if we have Jesus in our heart, then we should all want the same thing. And are we going to always agree on everything exactly alike? Probably not. 
but at least it's going to be similar. But let's remember those things because those things are really important. And I, I like what we've uh, studied in the, these lessons because it really means a lot to our life and if we learn that. So uh, on our story, I'm just going to show you some quick pictures. And I know that you, if you saw our uh, story last week, remember that a, um, Moses um, was called and, and was asked to go talk to Pharaoh and ask him to let his, his um, people free because they had been bondage for 400 years or more. And when he asked Moses to do that, look how scared Moses looked. He says, no, I can't do it by myself. I'm not a good speaker. And sometimes we feel like, well, I want to do it, but I can't do it because I, I don't feel comfortable or I have a problem uh, doing this. So God said, that's okay. I want you to do it. But listen, I'm going to send you a partner your brother. Your brother Aaron is coming and he's going to help you. And he did. So Aaron came, they went to Pharaoh and said, we want to, uh, I want you to free the people of Israel. And of course, Pharaoh said no. And he said, well, then Moses um, told them that um, there would be a lot of things happening to them. Plagues and different things happen. And they still did it. If you read this whole story and you could go in, that would be another study to study all the plagues and the different things that, that God sent to make them change their mind. And finally, they did. But before that, uh, Moses and Aaron showed him that, you know, God has power to do lots of things. Remember the snake? What did he throw down? His rod. And it became a snake. Pharaoh said, that's no, that's no problem. Um, my magicians can do that. And they threw it, and it did. It turned into snakes. But God always have, has the power over everything. And what happened to that snake? He ate the other snakes from the magician's uh, um, rods. So at the end, Pharaoh knew that he was not going to win and that God was more powerful. And you know what, through all the things that they had to go through, and the one plague that really I think uh, when he is, his son was lost, the first son uh, born in every family died, and he lost his son. And you know, if I lost my son, I would be really sad. And Pharaoh said, that's it. And they, did, they went. So we know that no one can outdo God. Pharaoh had to go through a lot before he decided Yep, you know what? God's going to do whatever he wants, and I don't want to lose anymore. So he let the people out. So you know what we're going to be talking about is about um, what is what can we learn from this? The one thing in Romans 12, 3, and I hope that all of you are reading your Bible. Remember my little message. Read your Bible, even if it's a few scriptures, and think about it so they get hidden in your heart. So when you need that scripture, God can bring it up into your memory. But in Romans 12, 3, it says, Don't think you are better than you really are. Some people think, I can do anything, like Pharaoh. No, you can't. God is in control. You might get away with a lot of things, but not always. So, the first thing that we're going to learn about merge, merging together, is to be humble. You know what? Don't think of yourself as better than anybody and everybody else. So, just like uh, Moses had to think about, I need somebody else. And he had to humble himself and get some help. So, our first one is um, to humble. And next is to put others first. Put others first. So, it would have been uh, easy after Aaron came and worked with, um, I have to think of the names, Moses, to say, hey, wait a minute. Because Aaron was doing the talking and getting the, um, the recognition, and Aaron, I mean, uh, Moses could have said, wait, God called me first. You're not the most important uh, person in this, this action. And... Uh, he asked me first, but I said I can't do it, and, he, and then he brought you. So 
I'm the most important person. No. So make sure you put others first. It's okay to be second. And God doesn't look at people as you're the best and you're the next. And, no, everybody is equal. So don't put others uh, behind you. Put others first. Many times in our lives, we want to take all the glory for ourselves. We want to be in the spotlight. And um, we do. We want to be noticed. But you know what? People notice you. And you don't have to, and to be right in the front. People that get in the front and, and do that, people that are watching say, what do they think they are? So you boys and girls, think about that. Put yourself in the back or put others first. And it shows your uh, personality has people's heart at the best. You see people as the way God wants you to see them. So that's, that's what we do when we're merging. We merge together. And you know what? Most of the time, we should be equal right side beside each other. And are helping and working together. And that's what that means. Put others first. Another uh, verse in Romans uh, 12, 10 says, Honor one another above yourself. So honor other people. Look what God did for us. You know what? He put us first. Because God saw all the things that were happening in the world. And you know what? He gave his son. And Jesus came down and put others first before himself. And he died for us, boys and girls. And that's why we can uh, have him as our Savior and know that we're going to be um, taken care of. But you know who God put first? Us. So if we're going to be like Jesus, we want to put others first. And... Even though Aaron did all the speaking and Moses performed the miracles, the signs to convince Pharaoh that it was God who sent them, Aaron spoke, Moses, uh, and, and uh, Moses did the miracles. They worked together as a team. So you know what? That's what I want you to remember about merging. Now, one person might be out in front, like uh, Aaron was speaking, and Moses was back doing the praying and, and telling God, I need a miracle, and, and God tells him, okay, do this. They work together, and I don't know if they would have gotten it done if they didn't have each other. Well, whatever God wants to do, he can do it, but they work together, and you know what? I was just thinking when I was studying this um, lesson that I um, was a teacher for almost 40 years, and I like to team with another person. So that means most of you have one teacher in your classroom. Well, when I was um, first starting to teach my very first year, I met a girl, and she wasn't from the Valley. And we got to be friends because we were both brand new teachers. And we said, wow, what are you doing with this? And we were brand new, so we were kind of asking each other, how do you do this one and how do you do that? And we became such good friends, and we decided why don't we team together? And it's a long story, but they opened the the uh, the wall, kind of like our kids' church. You know how we have our our side over where we have our our crafts and we have our snacks and things like that, and our we have our church uh, over on the other side. Well, our classrooms were like that. But what we did, we said, you know what? Um, we both taught reading and math. And we would divide the kids up, and I would take the high group or the low group, and, and we shared. We worked together. And then, since we had a large group of kids, well, I like to teach social studies. I love social studies. And so I said, well, I'll teach the social studies, and she likes science. And so I said, okay, I'll take your kids, and I'll teach social studies. And we did it all together, and she was my helper. And then when she taught science... Well, she taught the, the lessons, and I was her helper. We worked together, and I love that. And that this came so uh, true to me because I said, well, God, that's what I did with my teaching career. I had other uh, teachers uh, that I, I um, teamed with because my friend, uh, that her name was Lynn, and if she could uh, come and talk with you, she would be so much fun. You would love her. Um, cause she was so much fun and she was this happy go, 
person and um, she didn't live here and she lived in LA and she wanted to go back to where her family lived. But we taught together for seven years and I had the best time with her. And so then I would get other partners and we did it. But boys and girls, I had the best teaching career and, and working condition because I teamed together with somebody that I uh, admired, I trusted, and we did, I think, a super good job. A lot of the kids I still see say, oh, Mrs. Dedham, you were my teacher. Oh, you were, uh, Miss Davidson was your partner. Yep. So we teamed together. And you know what? I know a lot of you do that all the, all the time anyway. And you work together with some things, people in your, in your classrooms, not now, but maybe your brother and sister. Um, but another thing I wanted, um, I thought about when I was um, studying this, how about a handicapped person? And I, I've seen some of my kids, some of you, when you saw somebody that couldn't do something, you would run up and help them. And during my, my teaching, when I taught at De Anza, there was a handicapped uh, school next to mine. And so I wanted my students to get um, connected with those kind of kids. Some of them were in wheelchairs. Some of them couldn't talk. Some of them um, couldn't... Um, you know, write or do things or read. So I had friends over there and I talked to them and my kids volunteered and they wanted to help those little uh, boys and girls. And boys and girls, they loved it so much. They had certain times that they could go over, not during uh, learning time or academic time. And they would go over and work with those kids, uh, maybe sit down on a rug and read a story to them or take them outside in their wheelchair and, and uh, drive them around or play games with them. But boys and girls, they teamed together with those kids and taught them a lot that sometimes they loved it so much that they snuck over even when it was with their time. Maybe it was on lunchtime and they would go over and, and, and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with uh, their, whatever their partner's name was. And the teachers and the other teachers, of their, the handicapped kids, Teachers love them, have have them, to, have them to come over, but it was at the wrong time. And they would say, Mrs. Dunham, I love for them to come, but it's in uh, the wrong time. And they, they just love the kids. It wasn't they were getting in trouble. But boys and girls, they love doing things for other people. And that's what this lesson is telling you. Work together. Work together. Put others first. And if you see somebody that needs your help, do it. And you know who's who's telling you to do that or making you want to do that is God because you put God first in your life and then you want to put others uh, in your life first. So help them and God's going to be so pleased with you. So when you see other people that need help, put them first or when you're working and maybe when you get back to school, hope this reminds you, you know, don't be, um, you know, really forceful and, and oh, I'm, I'm the better one. I can do this best. Yes, you might be, but you know what? Work together, and maybe you could teach somebody else whatever you know better than they do. And everybody is not perfect in everything. You always have your strong points, and you do things better, but your friends or other people around you do other things better than you do. So accept that. And you know what? You're going to show the glory of God in your life, and people will see it. People tell me. They see, oh, I saw him doing this. That was so cool. I am so proud of them. They see when you do that, and it makes them very proud of you. And especially when we tell your moms and your dads and your grandmothers that what you did, they are so proud of you. So boys and girls, remember these two things. Humble yourself. Like, you don't have to be the best you don't have to be first and humble yourself. Put others first. Even if you think, oh, this would be my, my exciting time. I want to be, sometimes just walk away and say, go ahead, go ahead. You be first. And it'll give you a, the best feeling and God's going to be so proud of you. And then the last, work together. Don't fight. Fighting only causes more, um, uh, feelings and then you lose friendship so remember those things humble yourself put others first and work together 
And that's how God does it. And he gets work done. Look what he's done in the Bible. Lots of stories we could add to that, that putting um, others first and working together. So this is what our merging, merge, merge together, kind of like clap your hands and woo, we're, we're making a, a good music and a good sound. So let's pray and ask God to help us to merge and work together. Father, help these words to be in our heart and keep them in our mind. And when something comes up, I want just you to remind us what we need to do and humble ourselves that we don't have to be uh, number one all the time, but help us to work together so we can get more done. And most of all, we want to honor you in everything we do. And if we do these things, you will be glorified and honored in our life and be a witness to other people that, God, you're working through our lives. And I help pray for my... Uh, my boys and girls and students, that you will do help them in an instant, remind them what they need to be doing. And we thank you, Jesus, because you're the only one that can help us and help us to show your light in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's a good lesson, and I hope you remember a lot of that because what is it time for? It's time for our brain drain. And see how many... Uh, questions you can get right so however you're keeping track and if you were listening last week and this week you should get them all right and I hope I can hear you say I got a hundred that would make me happy so first one was what's up today what was our uh, what was our what's up that you and me agree Christians unite you and me we agree we can work in unity which is a and the answer is, yep, you and me, we agree, we can work in unity. Remember that word unity, together. All right, we got that one right. What road sign did we learn from today? Well, today and last Sunday too. Was it the yield sign, merge sign, or deer crossing sign? Well, that would have been a good lesson. What was it? Merge. And we've talked about it for two weeks, so you should remember that. Number three, what does it mean to merge, to split up, to come together, clean out your closet? That's what I've been doing. What is it? Yes, to come together and remember, work together. Number four, who were the two men in the Bible story? Peter and Paul. We've heard of them. Moses and Aaron. Tom and Jerry. Oh, who was it? Yep, Moses and Aaron. Did you get that one right? Number five. What was it that Moses didn't think he could do when God asked him, God, I can't what? Speak, hear, or rap? Speak, of course. He didn't feel comfortable speaking. And number six. According to our lesson today, what do we need to be? First thing we need to be is nice. Yeah, we need to be nice. Humble? Good. What was it? Yep, humble. Put yourself up last. Don't put yourself out like I'm the best. Number seven, according to our lesson today, put others, oh, first, last, or down. Whoa, you've seen all of those, haven't you? And it should be, of course, first. Put others first because people are going to uh, acknowledge that to you. Number eight, according to our lesson today, work how? How are we supposed to work? Hard? Yeah, we should work hard. Together? Yeah. Work out? Yeah. They all have different meanings, but which one goes with our lesson is together. Work together. Get more done, and you have more fun because you can feed off of each other's brain and, and answers. Number nine, true or false? As Christians, we should work alone. No, I don't want to work with you. God wants you to work by yourself. Is that true or false? And it is false. And you know what? I'm glad because I don't like to work by myself. I like to work for somebody else because you can learn from them, and they can learn from you. And so there's an advantage. Number 10, 
Where was our power verse found? Was it in 1 Corinthians 3, 9? Psalms 133, 1? Or Hebrews 5, 21? Where was it? Yep, Psalms 133, 1. So, oh, I wish I could see your hands. I hope everybody got 100. If you got 100, you got them all right? Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure most of you did. I, my kids are the smartest kids, and I know that you, um, you listen and you've learned a lot. So, boys and girls, this um, sign has been really important to me, and I've loved it because it helps you to live the life that Jesus wants you to live. Live together and merge together and work together and be humble. Don't put yourself out. You don't have to be in the spotlight. So, I hope you had fun, and I hope you learned a lot. And I hope you use this in your daily life. Every day, think about things that you just learned in all of the lessons, too. So, you've been sitting a while. Stand up and remember our song that we sang last uh, week, which kind of was a um, every move I make. So, get up and move around like we do at, at uh, Kids Church and have fun singing this song with them. And I'll come back to tell you bye. Enjoy. Thank <laughs> you. that song here and it almost makes me want to cry because you guys love that song and you know what all the words in it mean so much so rewind it and sing it again if you can boys and girls 
I love you and I hope everything is going well with you. And I'm going to bring your, uh, your activities tomorrow. And I hope you have a good week next week. I'll be praying for you. And you remember all the things you're learning. And don't forget, remember I always say, read a little bit of your Bible, read your Bible every day, and talk to God all the time. See you later. Bye-bye. Have a good week.